Hi, I'm Pastor Dave, and welcome to this week's video blog. President-elect Trump. Well, what does that mean? What, are the, what is the word president-elect? I mean, we, we went to the polls November 8th. Everybody voted. So isn't he now the president? Now, obviously, he hasn't taken office, but can't we use the term President Trump? No, we really can't. And, and the words president-elect have some very important meaning behind it. You know, the night of the election, I sat down with my girls, and I was trying to teach them you know, what the, the numbers meant because states were starting to come in and, you know, some states had four electoral college votes, some had 20, some had 14, you know, they went all over the place, as you know. And the key was to get to 270. So as so I was trying to explain it to my children, I was saying, you know, this is something that we need to make sure everybody understands because it's not official yet. Is this 538 electoral college votes. Now, what happens on December 19th it's usually the second Wednesday in December, but this year it's a Monday, it's December 19th. On December 19th, the Electoral College, those who are in that position to cast their votes, they will go to their state capitals in all 50 states and they will cast their votes. Now, 99.9% .9 of the time, what they vote is whoever won that state. Whoever won that state, they vote for that person and that person officially becomes president. So October 8th, the people spoke. On December 19th, the, the Electoral College will make it official. However, there's an issue here. There is something called a faithless elector, which means that the state could have voted for one person, and he's not going to carry that faith. He's not going to be faithful with that, and he's going to switch the vote. Now, this has only happened once in our history, and, and basically that was due to a death of a candidate. But what happens is, this has been so crazy, this election, I'm just not assuming anything or taking anything for granted. So until December 19th comes and, and the votes get cast and, and President-elect Trump gets his you know, 270 plus votes, he's not gonna be president. And ABC News has actually came out and said there is one in Washington state part of the Indian tribe who said he, who, Clinton should be the vote. In Washington, she got enough votes, and he should be a, a voting to elect Clinton as president, but he's already said he refuses to do that. He will not vote for Hillary Clinton because she's not supported the American Indians, and he went on with a list of reasons. However, he's going to be a faithless electronic, elector voter in the college. What happens? See, there's a fine involved, a thousand dollar fine involved, and he said, "I'll pay the thousand dollars and switch my votes." And that, what if that happens throughout the country, and it could be chaos. So there's 21 states that don't have any penalty at all. So there's 21 states where someone could come in and just flip the votes and so on and so forth. So I, I just really understand where we're at with this, with, with the elector college and, and these votes coming in. Section three of the 20th Amendment says that once that, that vote is cast on December 19th, if anything happens from that point on, the vice, pre the vice president then becomes president. But what happens in between November 8th and December 19th? If you've seen the news, Trump Tower in New York, where the president-elect is living, they're bulletproofing the windows in his, in his penthouse, there's security, there's, there's you know, blocks outside with, with, with fences and so on and so forth. Why is the security so tight at Trump Tower? Because the president-elect, that's where he is living right now. If anything were to happen to him, if he were to become um, incapacitated by any means, then the whole thing is up in the air. There is nothing in that. The 12th Amendment says that there has to be a joint session of Congress on January 6th. So the 12th Amendment talks about on January 6th, Congress has to come together and officially accept the votes from December. But what happens in between November and December is, is kind of a gray area. It's no man's land. So if anything happens to our president-elect in that time, everything is up in the air. And again, things have just been so crazy with this election. I don't take anything for granted. I don't think anything's going to happen, but I want you to be aware of that. So you have November 8th where the people speak. You have December 19th where the, the, the states come together. And on January 6th is when the joint session of Congress, based on the 12th Amendment, they will come together and they will, they will accept the votes from the Electoral College in December and we'll have a president. Two weeks later, he'll be inaugurated and the, the, and the journey begins. Now, what's that journey begin? This would be a different show for a different time, but I want to kind of give you a breather because I think uh, the Federal Reserve, which is neither federal nor reserve, 
has already fired one shot over the bow. You know, about 10 days ago, they, they started to raise the rates a little bit on mortgages, and they, they went to Trump and they said, do not touch Dodd-Frank, which, which is one of the things that President-elect Trump said he's going to go after. Again, different time for a different show, but Dodd-Frank deals with banks and the banking regulations in Wall Street and so on and so forth. So, so it's, they said, don't touch that. Uh, they're, they're concerned with what Trump might do. And, and basically, when he takes office, President Obama is going to be the $20 trillion man. We are just this close away from being $20 trillion in debt. Now, now let, me, let me put that in perspective. You know, we throw these numbers around so often, we don't even think about them anymore. $20 trillion. If you would have lived in the time of Jesus 2,000 years ago, if you would have started spending a million dollars a day, how much do you think you would have spent over the last 2,000 years? If you could go out and spend a million dollars a day, how much would you have spent? Now, I know some of you are good at math, and you're already taking out pen and paper, and you're figuring that up. $365 million a year for 2,000 years, you would have spent less than $1 trillion. If my numbers are correct, you would have spent about $730 billion, but you wouldn't have made the $1 trillion mark. Isn't that amazing? A million dollars a day for 2,000 years, less than one trillion, and right now our country is just, it's just an inch away from being $20 trillion in debt. When it gets to $21 trillion, we will be paying a, 20, we'll be paying a trillion dollars a year just in interest. That's what Donald Trump will be taking on. And, and, and again, if the whole thing collapses, he's going to get blamed for it. Everybody's going to come against him. But that's what's being handed to him and what's being given on his plate as we look at this. You know, since the fiscal year began, September 30th, since the 2017 fiscal year began, we've already went $294 billion in debt. That's the American way, I guess, right now. Again, that would be time for a different show for a different, for a different day. But I just want you to understand, we don't have a president officially until December 19th when the Electoral College comes together and they cast their votes and he gets more than 270. They should speak for the people and, and that should be fine. And it won't be official. They won't be officially accepted until Congress meets on January 6th. So we've got a few more weeks to kind of make sure we pray and make sure everything is okay. But that's what we're heading into. And then we've got the financial mess, $20 trillion in debt. Just kind of think about that number. What would happen if your household was that far upside down? And that's where our country is. So anyhow, that's the video blog for this week. Hope you enjoyed it. Look forward to seeing you again next week. Thanks. God bless you. Happy Thanksgiving.